What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast. Today we have episode 66, and we are talking about Stan Romanek and the Stan Romanek story, his documentary on various platforms, including Netflix, uh, called Extraordinary. It came out a little while ago, and we watched it back then. And then we've gotten so many messages to talk about this. Yeah, and a lot of people to, are interested in yes, it. Yes, and to share our thoughts on it, what we think. Exactly. So we watched it again with fresh minds. We did. And yeah, we're here to tell you what we think. And I mean, it is a very interesting story because if, if what <laughs> this guy says is entertaining. true, <laughs> he's like... <laughs> literally the biggest like paranormal experiencer of like all time if you think about it all the things that uh, happens to him huh. if it's true is what i'm saying if <laughs> that's it, a hard if tr- there yeah. folks <laughs> yeah so it's a very interesting story and we we think you guys will enjoy it and i know yeah. we've been we've been off the cr- crime for a bit but next week we've got yes. a really exciting episode coming we do we have sarah turney coming out who is Alyssa turney's sister and she is going to be talking about updates in the case since i covered it last i think it was july yeah yeah. um and so we are going to actually be recording the episode this friday um because that is the anniversary date of when Alyssa first went missing um and then obviously the episode will go live at the normal time but um yeah it'll it'll be really cool to do a crime episode where we're actually talking to somebody yes a victim yeah of well a victim's sister She's a victim too, though. Right. And it's it's a mind-blowing story. So oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so cool to ask her questions. We're really looking forward to it. So yeah. she's coming. She's flying all the way out here. It's it's really awesome. Where's she? Arizona, right? Arizona, I think. Yes. Well, yes, she is in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said I think, but. Yeah, that'll yeah. be super exciting. It's going to be super fun. I'm looking forward to getting back into some crime because all this phenomena is, is crazy today. as hell. <laughs> this is definitely like. A strange one, folks. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Buckle up. Yeah, definitely. But before we get into uh, our news topics this week, we just wanted to briefly remind you guys that we will be live in Austin at RTX Podcast Festival Yes. on July 7th. We'll be doing a live show 3 to 4 p.m. And we'll put links for you guys. If you are happen to be in Austin or want to come out for the the convention, you can buy tickets and things like that. You'll have a chance to meet us as well because we'll have like a booth and then I think we're actually doing like a scheduled meetup as well. And we'll let you guys know as soon as yeah, we have I hope so. the times and stuff. Yeah, we'll. Ha- I think we'll have an uh, actual like scheduled thing. And then we also do have our live shows scheduled as well. It's yeah, Sunday the 7th it, yeah. at 3. To- oh, did you say it? I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. No, no, no. You're good. <laughs> I you're just want to make sure we got that out there. So, yeah, Sunday the 7th, 3 to 4 p.m. Which will be really interesting because this will be completely new for us. Obviously, we've yeah. never done anything like this before. I mean, we don't even really do that. We don't do the show live. So, yeah, right now we're, you know. We pre-record and everything, and we, mm-hmm. you know, and we edit already, a bit, but yeah. And we're we're talking about what we want to do in the live shows because we want to make them different and unique from our normal show. We don't just want to like sit down and do a normal yeah, just podcast sit here and talk to each other. Yeah, so there, it's going to be really fun. Um, and this one in Austin will be our first one that we're going to kind of experiment with how we do live. And you know, eventually we're hoping to go on tour, you guys. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, if you can't make it to this one, maybe you can make it to a future one. We Down might the be road. coming closer to you. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. We want to, we want to meet you guys for one. We want it. We want to meet the people that are into all this, you know, crazy stuff that we are. And I think it'll just be a really great experience to sort of bring this content, you know, to you live and in a totally different new experience from what you're used to here, you know, in our yep. typical podcast. So, yeah. And we're hoping to make it really like fan interactive and, a fun show like we're gonna do some, something like, different really like, cool experience yeah. we, if you've ever seen a yeah. podcast live you know everybody does it a little bit differently and mm-hmm. you know we're hoping to bring something new and fresh and you know more in, you know integrated with you guys you know whoever happens to come to the show and stuff so yeah yeah it'll be sweet so yeah wait. good things coming but anyway let's get into woke news for all right so this week i had to bring up this story because i had briefly alluded to this last week in yeah. our last episode talking about how you know we literally may have to leave earth and live in space because our planet's being destroyed and all of that and what's crazy is that literally this past week jeff bezos amazon ceo aka richest motherfucker in the world had a, a news conference or media event about his space program which a lot of people don't even realize it but jeff bezos is basically elon musk like on steroids like he's got way more money way more things going on and he has his own space program but what he revealed is that he believes that 
fairly soon, sooner than later, we may be building colonies in space where millions and millions of people may leave this planet and live in these cylinder like colonies in space. Cylinder. Interesting. Yeah. Did they have like a, a mock up? Yeah. You can see the picture. Um, oh, scroll down. Yeah. So it, it literally looks like it reminds me of something from like a movie, like a sci-fi movie or something where they have these like round cylinder crafts are massive, but then they're like, I don't know if they're encased in glass oh. or what. Oh, they're massive. So that would be like land and water in there, yeah. like a planet. Yeah. I was confused. I thought that was painted on there. I was like, what? People are just going <laughs> to live in tubes. No, no, no. It's like an oh artificial my planet. Gosh, Isn't that, that is crazy? so cool. But also like kind of crazy. I just, I don't know. I feel like that's so bad that we've already like gotten to that point. Where we're just like giving up and well, he's saying that his reasoning is because population of the planet you know, yeah. we're, it is out of control. It's getting crazy. Yes. And the resources are not there to support mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. as well as the energy usage. Like our energy usage on the planet right now is absurd. And as more it's only going to get worse. Correct. Right. And what's that going to do? Accelerate the decay of the planet unless we radically change things, obviously, which right. could happen or new technology comes in or gets released and, you know, takes over the current infrastructure that we have. But, mm. you know, it's, it was interesting because I was talking about how you know, the elite or the rich people may be the first ones to leave the planet. And it's pretty much what Jeff Bezos alluded to that, like, you know, it'll be like the rich and probably people that have yeah. money that are going to be able to afford to leave the planet. But what his idea was that was in interesting to me was that he's thinking like, we leave the planet so that the planet can recover. And we live in space, but we still come back to Earth, you know, like so we like some we of have us, the planet. Right. That was kind of his thinking behind it. Because people won't be there to destroy it. And right. if we destroy this fucking tube, then We're whatever, space we make a new whatever. tube. Right, exactly. That's exactly what he was saying is. Uh, interesting. God, what a forward thinker. Yeah, that's pretty I'm bold idea. I'm a big ideas. fan of him, honestly. I think eh, he, but, Amazon employees get treated like shit. Yeah, but that's an interesting thought for sure. I like that. And um, I, I think it's kind of going to be a reality. I, I I really think that. And he's going to start this. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's gonna already going to start doing it. hundred percent. So he's off somewhere in a lab well, making this tube. <laughs> no, he's not. But they're definitely, these people. are concepts. Like this is early in the process. Like these are just artist concepts. Well, it must be like something he's actually working towards if he's willing to release them to everybody. Yeah, and you absolutely. Get excited. Absolutely. I mean, don't get our hopes up if we're really that fucked. No, but this looks pretty cool. Um, if you're not watching on YouTube, it really looks like some type of, yeah, like a space station, but with a planet inside of it, but not a planet because it's like a big strip of land. It's like the flat earth theory, but like in a tube, exactly. it's like what the flat earthers think everything is. <laughs> yeah. Kidding. Everything's contained in, in the, this like little this. world. Yeah. How interesting. He said that they were going to go as far as like remaking wow. cities from the yeah. real planet in Designing. these artificial colonies like Paris yeah this France looks like it's supposed colony. to be like Venice or Munich or something how strange can you imagine this world living, is so weird like living in a like tube flying through outer space or floating in outer space and well I guess you probably after a while would just be like especially if you're born in there yeah you're like, like I don't know any different be like Truman Show Literally, yeah, like, like just the Truman Show, but way bigger, and everyone's not in on it secretly. How interesting! But there'd be no weather, no weather there. It'd always be the same like weather. But how like, is that possible? Like, doesn't I don't know exactly how grow you would, and yeah? Shit. How do you take care of trees? There's gonna stuff? have to be like artificial weather because they have to have rain. We need weather for like life to function. I don't know, unless he's got something up his sleeve to take care of that issue. I don't know. It's really something crazy. Something up his sleeve. <laughs> so, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I think we'll, I think it's just kind of a waiting game to see, but I really think that. I bet you get hella prime service in there, though. You oh, order wait. something and it like comes on this little train like super fast. Or just gets like, like immediately. There's just like Amazon lockers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought that was interesting, but the next thing we wanted to talk about was was big news coming out of our our hometown here in Denver, Colorado. Mile High City, baby, became the first what city after. in the country to decriminalize magic mushrooms or psilocybin. Well, that's the mushrooms. Yeah, that's the 
actual psychoactive chemical in mushrooms. If you don't know anything about magic mushrooms or what they are, so there's types of mushroom species out there, which there's hundreds and hundreds mm-hmm. and hundreds of species. Lots of them are actually poisonous for you, but yes. but not uh, psilocybin mushrooms. They are, you know, a psychedelic is, is what they're called. And there's, you know, different species that have this psychoactive compound that will give you a, you know, psychedelic experience and were very popular, like during the 70s and 80s and things like that. And yes, with the war on drugs, they got kind of got shut down and things like that because yep. because of their psychoactive properties, kind of like you know, marijuana or something like that or cannabis. So mm-hmm. too mind opening, mind altering. Exactly. Consciousness exactly. awakening. And I'd just like to say for those that don't know anything about it, you know, it's easy to assume if something is illegal or like a class A or, a, you know, schedule one drug mm-hmm. like methamphetamine or any mm-hmm. of those other types of drugs, you know, magic mushrooms are one of those things that has never killed. Nobody has directly died as a result of an overdose of magic mushrooms ever, ever. It's always been somebody's like tripped out too much and then did something or something like that. Nobody. So they can be. We're not saying that they can't be dangerous. They can be. You have to wrong circumstances. Be responsible with them, obviously. But it's a natural thing. It's just like marijuana or alcohol. Well, I guess alcohol's kind of. But it's like you don't go. You don't get drunk and go drive. You don't get drunk and go. Some people do. Do and that's the thing is like if with everything there's always going to be someone who misuses it and stuff. Mm -hmm. But people are way more likely to do something dumb on alcohol than marijuana or uh, psilocybin mushrooms. Right. And, and so. that's the thing is you don't ever, do you ever hear about magic mushrooms? In yeah. The news it's not like you or constantly anything? see this. No, yeah. And never. people are doing them like just oh, yeah. because you don't see it. <laughs> They're people everywhere. Are. Yeah. So that's, it's really interesting because a lot of people don't understand this and it's not just so people can like get fucked up. No, it's so, it's a lot of people could really benefit from these in a lot of different ways and they don't have to be taken like in a large quantity to trip on them. It can be taken in my, what they call microdosing. It's just a tiny amount that um, is showing there's like studies showing that it's Helps curing anxiety. people's depression, anxiety. Um, I mean, it just does so much. It could do so much for your mental health. And then they say, if you do a trip, it's kind of like a mental reset in a way. It opens your consciousness. It's, um, I mean, I think it's something of the earth. And I really believe that things that are of the earth should be legal. I don't think things that are of the planet, not that there aren't. Especially in their raw form, though. That's the whole thing. Because people will be like opioids or whatever. (laughs) Yes. Come from, you know, the plant. Yes. Raw form, like straight up out the ground. Right. That is my right to use it. This is my planet. That's what I think. Well, this Uh, is. I know people um, will disagree with me about that, but. No, I mean, I just think it should be people's personal choice whether or not they use certain plants. It's like a plant. It's a plant. So I don't know. And what's here's here's something interesting, though, is there was actually they've been doing a lot more research on on psych, uh, psychedelic mushrooms or psilocybin, the the chemical, and a John Hopkins study, John Hopkins University study said that psilocybin can occasion mystical type experiencing or experiences having substantial and sustained personal meaning and spiritual significance. A third of participants in their study said a psilocybin trip was the most spiritually significant experience of their lives. Mm. And then also most recently, the Food and Drug Administration declared psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy a quote-unquote breakthrough therapy for depression. It is. This is a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Like this, because I feel like the the antidepressants out there right now are just kind of garbage. And like, oh, they are. They're not. They help, but they're not like healing you. And that's Mm-mm. the thing is like this has a potential to actually cure you of your depression. Cure it, yeah, completely. We talked to someone when we were in San Francisco like two years ago, maybe. Um, we talked to this guy who was, I mean, he had them illegally. <laughs> it was in California, so it's not legal there. And But he was microdosing, so using a small amount every single day. And he said that it cured his depression yeah, like completely. Yeah. A lot of people. And he are, knows a lot of people that have also had the same thing happen to them. Yeah. So it was really interesting getting his perspective. That's where I first heard about it. Yeah. No, and... I think that this is a great first step for Denver to decriminalize it because a mm-hmm. lot of people don't know this either. But in the U.S., Denver Denver was the first city to decriminalize marijuana mm-hmm. back in 2005, I believe. They decriminalized it, which that means basically 
police, they like put that on their lowest level of like enforcement. Basically, they don't enforce it. They don't yeah. enforce it. If you get caught with, you know, magic mushrooms in Denver, only the city of Denver right now, yeah. you're not going to get ticketed, arrested, most likely, That's um, so or any sort of nothing happened to you, especially if it's wow. a small amount and you're like, it's personal use. Crazy. Isn't that crazy? It is. So it's really interesting. I just think that anything that is helpful for someone or could cure their depression should be something that they have a right to use period, especially something that's natural and of the earth, you know, yeah. it's just, this makes sense. And I'm really proud of this city again, leading the pack, the mile high city, man. Oh yeah. That's Always why we named our mile podcast higher. <laughs> mile high higher because we are Denver proud people. We are. We're literally a mile higher above sea level and yes. we're going a mile higher every day or every Monday. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so, so yeah. that's, that's pretty cool stuff. Pretty interesting. We'll keep following that and keep you guys updated on more things that come out with that whole world. Yes. Yes. So if you're like me, you probably deal with stress and anxiety probably on a daily basis. I mean, I know I do, and it can be oftentimes hard to just deal with it and find a way to alleviate that stress, you know, with all the things that are going on in this world right now and how crazy everything is, it can be really hard to even just sleep at night. So what can you actually do to help alleviate that stress, help you sleep better, as well as help with your anxiety? Well, today I'm here to tell you that we are partnering with Calm, the number one app to help you reduce your anxiety and stress and help you sleep better. More than 40 million people around the world have downloaded it already. If you head to calm.com slash mile higher, you'll get 25% off a Calm premium subscription. And what's really cool about your subscription is it includes a lot of different things like guided meditations on issues like stress, anxiety, and focus, as well as a brand new meditation for you every single day. There's also one of my favorite things called sleep stories, which are literally bedtime stories for adults designed to just help you relax. Right now, Mile High listeners get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash mile higher. That's C-A-L-M dot com slash mile higher. Get unlimited access to all of Calm's content today at calm.com slash mile higher. So one thing that I truly love in life is subscription boxes. For some reason, it's like it feels like Christmas because you're getting this surprise gift in the mail <laughs> and it comes and sometimes you don't even remember that it's coming. So it's like a nice surprise. So one of my favorite subscription boxes is FabFitFun. This is actually a seasonal box if you've never seen it before. So it comes four times a year and it's filled with full size beauty, fitness, and lifestyle products. They have a bunch of really high quality brands such as Tarte, Kate Somerville, Anthropology, Free People, Dr. Brandt, and that's just the beginning of it. So even in this box right here, we have the new Tarte Skincare Drink of H2O. So I'm really excited to try that. This is cruelty free, which is awesome. This box came with a lot of skincare stuff, which is great. I'm trying to redo a bunch of my skincare because I'm going completely cruelty free. Um, so these products are gonna be awesome. It also has like a foot cream, everything that I would need for summer. And then it also has this really cute little dish in here and a towel, a beach towel. So you never really know what you're going to get in it. But I always love and use everything in my FabFitFun boxes. They're really fun to get. It retails for $49.99, but it is valued at over $200. So check it out at www.fabfitfun.com and use the code MILEHIGHER so you can save $10 on your first box, making it only $39.99. Again, that's fabfitfun.com and use the code MILEHIGHER because as you deserve to treat yourself. But let's go ahead and get into the extraordinary or extraordinary <laughs> Stan Romanek story. So Stan Romanek, who who the hell is this guy named Stan who we are doing a whole episode on today? Well, and I really OK, so I suggest that even if you watch that, if you listen to this and you're like, oh, my gosh, this guy's probably full of it. I still think you should watch it because it's hella entertaining. And like, I found some nuggets that weren't just in the documentary that are funny. Classic, man. I huh? seriously like, okay, so I can't, Josh is, you know, more, he's. I'm so I well first. So people understand who don't know who he is. He's, he's a guy that has said he's been abducted by aliens a number of times. He's had all these experiences with UFOs and all that kind of stuff, which I love that whole world. So it's easier mm -hmm. for me to believe in it than probably you just because. I've done a lot more research and just looked at a lot more cases of alien abduction. And so things might make more sense to me versus somebody that doesn't know. You're all the different more things. likely to 
you're you're I'm more skeptical towards him right. than Josh is. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and so when I first saw this, it was in 2017. And um, <laughs> I laughed like during the entire thing. I was oh, like, I this too, is, yeah. oh, my gosh, this is so bad. Um, there's so many reasons why we'll get into all of it. But so many people have asked us to look at this. And I think a lot of people believe it. And no offense to anyone out there who believes it. I don't doesn't I don't want anyone to think. You well, know. Yeah, I mean, we don't know at the end of the day. Yeah, I don't we know don't know. He could, be, he could be telling the truth. We're just sharing our opinions. But I decided to give it another chance and try to be like, go into it completely unbiased. We watched it again. And I was just like, oh, my. It's hard. It's gosh. hard. It's hard. <laughs> it was crazy. So. And we'll actually be including clips from the documentary because you just have to with this. You have yes. to hear him talk. Yeah, we don't you care have if we to get see the evidence. You have it's to see the it. evidence in order to really understand this story. Like yeah. we can't sit here and explain this guy. He's got to kind of like explain it's himself. Funny. It's hilarious. Hope you guys get a laugh or you're interested or if you believe it. Yeah, or maybe it, he's, inter- it blows your mind. <laughs> he is who he says he is. So who is Stan? So his name, his full name is Stanley Tiger Romanek. Tiger. Never seen somebody with a middle name Tiger. Well, that's our first red flag, people. <laughs> red flag. So... Mr. Romanek was born on December 1st, 1962 at a military hospital in Denver, Colorado. Oh, and that's the other reason we wanted to call yeah. it, uh, cover it is because he is from Colorado. Yeah, he lives he lives in Colorado still, I believe. In Colorado um, Springs, right? Yep, yep. So he was born uh, to an Air Force officer. And he was the youngest of four children. And basically, he explains his childhood of like moving around a bunch, you know, in an Air Force or military family. Oftentimes, you got to move around to various military bases. So he lived in, you know, throughout the Midwest and the Western United States through 1972. What's really interesting, and some people don't believe him, but he claims that he was young, a youth, in the middle of the rising violence between the Crips and the Bloods. He says that this was during a period in time that his father, who was in the military, was stationed in Los Angeles. So he basically said that he grew up or lived in Compton, like Compton, California at the prime time of the gangs. And he said he used to get like beat up a lot because he was like the only white dude in the area and stuff. So I don't I don't know if for sure he he did or not, but that's just what he claims. Hmm. But Stan is now married. I believe he's like 56 years old. He's got a daughter and he lives with his wife um, and his two stepdaughters and a stepson in Colorado Springs. And one of the things that he brings up about his childhood is the fact that he had severe dyslexia, which I can relate. (laughs) You can relate to that. I would definitely not call mine severe. I'd call mine like what even is severe dyslexia? dyslexia. (laughs) Um, like bad. Like he, it's hard to. Sorry, remind me dyslexia again. Dyslexia is literally where your eyes jump around when you're reading. It's hard to complete sentences. Uh, it's hard to read out loud. Gotcha. It's gotcha. hard. Like you literally mix up letters and words when you write. You mix up letters as a kid. You'll like do your B's and D's backwards. And gotcha. It's Just like, little things like that. It's, yeah. It's like more about the characters. But I it could know. really hinder your learning and hinder oh, like yeah. school is like tough. Let me tell you, friends, school sucks when you are not good at reading. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Well, so, so much of it is reading. So. Yeah, every everything <laughs> every single class has reading in it. Like, yeah, yeah. If if you struggle with reading, like good luck. <laughs> it sucks. I've been there. Barely got through it, but I did. Keep Can't trying. relate. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. But yeah. So Stan, he. He has severe dyslexia, and but although he is a very intelligent person, high IQ, but he was definitely more of an artistic person, and uh, you know, not as much scho- uh, a scholar. You know, scholarly abilities were not quite there. But as of right now, he is an American author. He's written several books about his extensive experiences, and most recently, he's now a convicted sex offender, which just like throws a whole huge <laughs> wrench into this whole thing. And we'll talk Second about at the end. <laughs> but basically, Stan Romana claims to have been abducted more than any other American in history. And abducted, I mean alien abduction. And he claims that he has uh, evidence to prove it, which is part of the, the evidence is in his documentary. And some of his paranormal experiences have been witnessed by others and are caught on camera, including a video of what appears to be an alien looking through the window. <laughs> Literally, he has footage of an alien being which we will show you in a bit, but 
Uh huh. But this is interesting too. So he's always been kind of this spiritual mystic, kind of like, you know, definitely like in the metaphysical uh, world. In fact, in his 20s, he was a Native American flute musician because he's part Cree, uh, Native American, and actually has an album you can listen to of him playing the Native American flute, which I love that kind of music. So. Yeah, you do love the flute. Especially the Native Americans called Medicine Wind by Stan Romanek. Look at that hair, man. If Josh ever gets a massage, he was always like, can we have flute music? Can you guys play flute music? <laughs> I do, because I really like that. And I'll listen to it just in the car, too. Oh, he's got the Coco Pelly on his yeah, album. Yeah. Medicine Wind by Stan Romanek. He, he, he considers himself a very spiritual person, which is interesting. He woke. Yeah, exactly. He definitely <laughs> woke. But his like kind of claim to fame is is through this documentary. I mean, obviously, 100 million subscribers <laughs> yeah. on Netflix. A lot of people are going to see this documentary, and they have. And and uh, I remember it was kind of advertised on the front page for a little while. Yeah, it was. Like well, the when first it hits, couple, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was definitely popular. And in this documentary, he claims he's got like 10 plus years of evidence proving that his paranormal experiences are real. And he claims that he has experienced 195 different paranormal events happen to him which is a fuck ton of yeah, events like that really is that blows any other ufologist or any other person really in this whole paranormal fields <laughs> records out like i'm yeah. pretty sure but what's also interesting is not only does he claim that he was abducted multiple times he also claims that he is a star seed <laughs> which we have talked a little bit about but basically it's somebody who is crossbred with an alien being in order to create a hybrid being. It's almost like, think of it like a seed, like being planted on earth. Right, exactly. It's like an like alien his, seed. His planted. DNA originated from some other star system. Mm -hmm. So he believes that he is a star seed. And so when you hear him talk and you start really getting to know him, he kind of, doesn't he kind of carry himself like he's kind of like this messiah or like he's got like, all of this knowledge he's very sure of himself i don't think he comes across that way i think he comes across as like a fourth grade math <laughs> teacher but that's just me oh, i don't know dude yeah. i just think he looks like a pretty normal dude and nothing about him to me says star seed but yeah you know yeah i get like i'm i get a little annoyed with him almost because i really don't like liars you just so think I don't he's like just being... deceiving yeah constantly. and that's just my opinion i know sure. there'll be people that disagree but i really don't like the feeling of a fraud like ugh, well, i don't like yeah. hoaxing and i i really hate that honestly because it makes discredits it dis everything discredits else. the rest yeah. of the the real deal that i mean i believe in aliens 100 percent. you even believe that they're probably already visiting us and contacting yes, i'm not like, skeptical at all but like i'm not going to believe just anyone who makes a documentary right. claiming right. especially because most of his claims come directly from him if not all of them like i oh, mean there's yeah. no one to like right. back him up versus yeah. there are other ufo or like dr greer yeah he, exactly. he's a great he example so much evidence he has papers and he's whipping out this and he's got this person backing him up the and ce5 he's, he's stuff? worked with a like uh not obama um just like aides to presidents and things like he's yes. briefed different people yes. in the white house and things Bill like Clinton, that sorry but the main thing i was going to say is like actual contact with with uh extraterrestrial beings and interdimensional beings things like that and right you know he Dr. Rue is actually working on a new documentary all about contact. Yeah. And he has some very extraordinary evidence. We have got to get him to on back the show. I know. We yeah. want to. Eventually, it will happen. But my whole thing with all of this is that if you're going to make extraordinary claims like Mr. Romanek yes. does, there's better be some really good extraordinary evidence. Extraordinary evidence. Exactly. And exactly. he doesn't have such evidence. So, well, yeah, I get a little see. annoyed with him during this. Like, I find myself <laughs> feeling tricked and... Just like I get a yucky feeling about him. So nothing about him says Messiah or like spiritual healer star seed to me. But hey, well, we'll <laughs> see what you guys think about this. So when do these events start happening to Stan? So it was December 27, 2000 is when things kicked off. And Stan was hoping to entice his girlfriend, now wife in Nebraska to visit him in Colorado. So Stan decided to videotape a popular and scenic area just in the foothills of Rocky Mountains called Red Rocks Amphitheater, which we've driven by and yes. been at many times. And a lot of people know what Red Rocks is. It's pretty famous. And so he happened to, it is, it is very famous. Um, beautiful place. 
just gorgeous concert if you ever get a chance to go to a concert at red yeah. box like it's, it's cool because it's a natural theater so it has natural acoustics just from the rocks like the sound bounces just off the echoes. rocks and it's, oh, it's so beautiful it's a really cool experience it's a must do in colorado if you ever come but anyway yeah so he he's ha- got his video camera with him in the car because he's going to go film like red rocks and everything and mm-hmm. like hey come out and visit yeah. me we'll go to red rocks check it out yeah. and that's when he said he was like on some back roads and then all of a sudden like he before noticed social media you have to like bring your cam- yeah, camcorder yeah, out yeah. It, all right i'm sending you a videotape in the mail literally literally <laughs> oh my gosh how weird yeah i'd even think about how's he gonna yeah. get that video footage to her like he'll probably put it on a vhs and send it to her yeah yeah, That's what back. my grandparents used to do. They would film things and then they'd send us VHS tapes of like our trip out to visit them or right. something. Because you get like the converter unit. Yep. Because mm-hmm. the cameras, they have those little cassette tapes. We right? just recorded. I remember my family just put the VHS into the VHS player and then played the camera's input records- on the screen and recorded it onto the the VHS. That's gotcha. what we did. Yeah, yeah. I think- but that's probably what he did. No, that's <laughs> exactly what he did. Gosh, now no one would do that. So he's driving up here at the foothills of the mountains near red rocks. And then all of a sudden he says, he notices a bunch of cars pull over. People are looking up in the sky. Yep. So he decides that he's going to pull over, pull out the whole video camera and start recording. What he says is a multi spherical UFO hovering like a hunt, like a hundred feet or maybe even less than that, just above the power lines. And he captured this on footage. This is the first paranormal event that happens to him. And we'll just play a little clip of it because you got to hear him. <laughs> So this will be so much better. So this is the first piece of evidence that he has. Okay. Oh my God, I'm shaking like a leaf. I hope I can get this. I hope this is working. Please be working. Please be working. Okay, I gotta come down. Mark, wait until you see this. You're gonna have a frickin' canary. <laughs> oh my God. Good. Hi. Okay. That is so right. fucking cringe. I am on my way up to the mountains to take some videotape uh, to show Lisa and uh, it is December 27th I believe you running your trap and like, I was uh, why are this you is filming Jewel, the UFO and, what's wrong with you oh my god I'm shaking saw something kind of out of the corner of my eye uh, just <laughs> skirting power skirting. lines uh, it uh, was tilted and straightened okay. out and shot straight up into the air and okay let me get a better Jesus. view of where i am okay okay here's the power lines and <laughs> if you look oh where is it, where did it go? <laughs> Son of a shut your trap yeah why are it. you filming the ground and talking he's like you're gonna lose a have a freaking canary <sighs> okay. there it is pull over okay so it it looks like he finally a... finds it in the sky and it just looks like a little like almost pill capsule yeah shaped ufo in the sky it looks like squidward's house flying <laughs> through the sky honestly i mean okay so his explanation of it is consistent with other ufo sightings this is a confirmed type of ufo craft that has been seen by other people so could this be a legitimate UFO sighting? Absolutely. And I will say that there are a lot of UFO UFO sightings in the mountains. Yes. Like near mountains. And I think they can hide in there if, you know, so like even my cousin and her boyfriend think they saw a UFO coming out of the mountains. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm not saying I completely disbelieve this. I even think that maybe he did see a UFO and this was like his first legit thing and then it sparked this whole interest from him and he just went crazy and he wanted it so bad right, right. that he started faking shit right because like this one i mean it could be fake let me ask you can this be faked yes yes okay yes so at the time that he's recording stuff it is possible to fake footage okay um you can definitely do it and it's not very hard especially with the older technology it's easier to insert things okay so you know, some people say that this is not, this looks fake because he can never get, like, his camera is so damn shaky. Like, that's, yeah. and why is, why is footage of UFOs always so shaky and, like, out of focus or blurry or just, like, can't you just chill for a second, no, like, the hold best, it in place? The like, best UFO footage is Julian Solomita's. <laughs> but that was not a UFO, though. That ended up being a rocket. A rocket. Yeah. I believe that was a UFO. 
Okay. I don't think they would test a rocket over LA. I think that is fucking bizarre. And they had like three different exam um, explanations for what it was before it was a rocket. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I well, don't know. whatever. Julian had the best footage of. Well, yeah, but I mean, he's guy. got the one of the best. That's what cameras I'm saying. Too, is yeah. like vloggers are the best chance yeah. for us to catch UFOs. <laughs> like yeah. if a vlogger's there. Well, there's a whole YouTube channel called UFO Seekers, and all the, oh, all I'm they sure. do is like chase oh. UFOs around in the desert. And are they finding any? Yeah, they find stuff I all the time. I feel like most of their content would just be like them searching and well, not a lot is. of whole scenes. Unfortunately, it is, and that's why it's hard to base a whole channel off. Yeah, seeking I was going to say like how because, that's got to be pretty lucky if you see that yeah. much. Yeah, God. exactly. <laughs> well, and that's where Stan is like kind of crazy because he's got 195 events that happened to him in a matter of under 10 years. So that's where things get a bit fishy, right? Hmm. So then time goes on. And on September 20th, 2001, Stan was about to close the retail store he managed for the evening when suddenly his customers came running back to inform him that there was a large blinking object hovering in the sky above the building. Everyone watched as the UFO eventually flew away only to return and follow Stan home. Stan quickly ran up to his apartment where his friend and sister were waiting for him to go out to eat and grabbed his video camera. Shortly after, he started filming the UFO quickly and it accelerated out of sight, of course, but he was able to capture a still from our uh, still from the short video that he actually filmed. And this thing looks interesting. I must say it's like this glowing red orb. Um, I've seen things like this before. Yeah. And I mean, uh, so I, my thought too is like, could it be like a yeah. uh, lantern, you know, like one of those lanterns or something? Oh, the those Chinese lanterns. Chinese yes. lanterns look very... Remember, well, yes. Oh my God. We were in Jamaica. <laughs> that was great. I was like vlogging. We were so drunk. We were on our balcony at like oh, our resort in Jamaica a while ago. Yeah. And we were filming the sky and all of a sudden I was like, there's a UFO. And like, you were freaking out too. I was filming. It was so embarrassing for so long. And then we realized there was a wedding at the hotel and they were launching Chinese lanterns. Yeah. But, but it's easy to mistake. <laughs> yes. Them. I mean, they it look, re it really does. And that's honestly, that what honestly this looks, looks like. like it because look at the bottom. Like yeah. that's an opening and you can kind of see in the middle, there's like a light source. Like there's a, yeah. Yeah. So but he's saying that this thing, this lantern, potentially followed him home. Like, flew behind him as he like went home. Uh, Okay, dude. Sure. So, yeah. So, it follows him home. And then Stan, when he got home, started to get a horrible headache in the back of his head. So, he decided to go to bed early in order to relieve it. Eventually, Stan fell asleep but was awakened at 2 a.m. by a knock at the door. Stan remembers three people waiting for him in the hallway. As he approached them, he realized they were not human. So here you're going to get to hear Stan talk about this because it's so much better to have him explain what he saw. They were in the hallway of his house. They, yeah. So they knocked at the door for what fucking reason? Then? Yeah. If they're just going to come in right, anyway, I'll just, I'll just be real. Like as I'm going through this, the information as far as the timeline of events came from his website and his <laughs> okay website was um first of all his website is gone i had to find an archived <laughs> version of it holy shit and it whoever wrote it had dyslexia well 100 <laughs> percent. it yeah. was him 100 <laughs> yeah. percent, it was him so this is i'm reading his official account but we'll obviously like give the other side as well but here's him talking about his encounter with these three non-humans okay two o'clock in the morning maybe two thirty and they must have been knocking for a while because I'm a heavy sleeper, but they knocked long enough that it woke me up. And I thought, first thing I thought is maybe my friend ran out of gas and he had to walk back. Maybe it was the neighbor, they were drunk. I wasn't sure. Got up to answer the door and I noticed as I, you know, start walking down the hall, my sister had already answered the door. And I looked past my oh. sister and there were three people standing outside. The first thing that popped into my head is, oh my God, they're here to rob be us. kind they're of scary though, us. that late at night. And I'm yelling at my sister, don't let them in because they're going to rob us. And she's, as I get closer, I, I realize that she's, eyes are kind of just slightly open, mouth just wide open. And she's staring at the ceiling like she's still asleep or something. And I'm yelling at her and she's not moving. 
And then when I get really close, I realize there's a female. Shit, I'd and two be scared males. too. I'd be and shitting I gotta tell my you, pants I right now. I was really scared. I mean, I was really scared because. <laughs> this is when he realized they I were probably real. I just come to the realization that UFOs were probably real. But I didn't really think about what? the he, fact that something oh had to God. be driving these UFOs and that they might not be human. And then now I'm com being confronted with this reality that there's something at my door that isn't human. And let me tell you, it was really yeah, cool. We'll, we'll just stop you there, buddy. Me. So, um, and yeah, so um, he right confronts these three I got aliens, that essentially, the female step and forward. then he, and for whatever reason, I could actually, hear myself sorry, screaming he in my head, but I couldn't, what happened. it wasn't coming out. And she grabbed my wrist. A thought oh, yeah. popped there we in go. my head. You're okay. It's going to be okay. And the thought was not my thought. Sounds like a dream. I didn't put that thought in there. It just appeared. And let me tell you, it the must have freaked popped. me out enough that I somehow snapped out of whatever trance they had me in. And there was a male Shit. on either, either side of me. And by the time we got outside to the balcony, I grabbed one of the males and I was going to literally throw him off the balcony. And I felt the light tap, like somebody was tapping the back of my head, and I woke up somewhere else. Shh, shh, WWE wow, style. Wow, dude. <laughs> it sounds like he's describing a fucking movie. Yeah, right? Like, it just sounds like lies to me. And he looks down to the left so much. And that yeah. is a major sign of yeah. lying, is like yeah. after talking, like avoiding and looking over to the side, or just looking over to the side. Well, first Especially of to all, the left. yeah. And I mean, I think you can pick apart what he says pretty easily because first of all, he claims he didn't know nothing about UFOs or aliens until that moment. And he, well, he said he believed in aliens at this or believed in UFOs at that moment, but not aliens. Right. What kind of fucking sense does that make? And then he like zero knew their genders like straight away. And the picture <laughs> that he depicts them as, I can't tell really. Yeah. I guess the, the female same. had, had boobs, I guess. That's oh, what yeah. he said. Okay. Female alien had boobs, so he's like, "Oh, there's the female," <laughs> but he was ready to like karate chop the the male off of his deck, and then he got tapped in the head and he just woke up. So he woke up the next morning, trying to convince himself that what had happened was just a bad dream. So because he did this, he just went about his normal routine. But family members actually noticed that Stan had strange marks and wounds Wait, on what his about, body. What about the sister that was fucking there and saw it? What did she say? Does she remember it? Did he ever say? Did she ever come on the documentary? There you go. Yeah. I didn't see her on there. That's the whole thing, right? Is He's like, oh, she saw it. But then where is she to tell the story? You would think that they would have <laughs> interviewed her. Yeah. Uh-uh. She's not in it. And they just completely skipped that part. They do. And it's he skips it. On, he doesn't fill that in on the website either. So I don't know. That's a great question. That There's a there's hole number one for you. Yeah. What did his sister? I assume that his sister knew and was the one that noticed the wounds and marks on him because here, the whole thing about it, as you'll find, is everybody around him believes him. Yeah, they believe his stories and, and his experiences to. or claim to. Yeah, so they discovered some interesting wounds on uh, Stan. He had these like little marks on his lower back, and he had these little marks on his wrists, almost like if he had had maybe like handcuffs on or something they're like literally right on his wrist, but they're just like little like scratches almost. And supposedly if you put the wounds under uh, a black light, they glowed. Right. I remember him doing this. And you know, it is consistent with other people that have claimed, you know, who have mysterious <laughs> wounds and things like that, who claim to have been abducted do have this happen as well. In some cases where, the wounds actually do glow under a black light for whatever reason, whether it's radiation or something. I think there's a reason that happens though. What do you mean? There's like a scientific reason. Yeah. I don't know. I'm looking it up. I thought I read something. Well, the, you can, you can bacteria, certain bacteria. Yeah. Um, but how do you put those in a certain spot? You know? Yeah. But it's possible but that he, he put something on. Yeah. He could have broken a light thingy, <laughs> like one stick, of those glow yeah. sticks True. dripped it on his True. cuts. It's true. Absolutely. No, he definitely could have done that. So, yeah. And apparently the wounds that he had healed and became scars in less than two days. It was like really, really quick. Um, 
Yeah, this is really? so random, but did you know scorpions glow under black lights? Really? Yeah, look. All of them. Oh, See that's that? really cool. Isn't that cool as fuck? Yeah, it is. So then he, so like in the documentary, they show this clip where he's talking about essentially that I've something weird happened. I don't know if I was abducted and he films it at night with like the little uh, night light on, on his camera. Cause I mean, yeah, that looks kind of paranormal to me. Don't you think? So here, here's what he had to say about his experience. Day before yesterday, when I had the sighting over the, uh, over my work, actually, when my <laughs> boss first saw it, um, that night, um, something must have happened because I woke up in the morning and I had um, some indentations in my back, and I didn't notice this actually. Uh, my sister noticed it, but I right, noticed that I noticed had. That. Uh, Where's your sister then, bro? Sores around it? my wrist, like I was I no. been roped or had been handcuffed or something. Okay. And this was, it's healed amazingly fast. They are weird looking wounds. And again, like, could he have done that to himself, though? You know? I don't think his sister is in it. No. So the wounds thing is weird though. And, and what is that? Like is if you're going to try to debunk his claims of these mysterious wounds showing up, like did he really like cause these to himself? Yes, People do that kind of shit yeah. to them all to themselves all the time. People liars, real liars will do we'll that. Go kind to of shit. great lengths to, Oh yeah. 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 And it's not that painful. A few no. seconds of pain and no, it none helps of your them. story. And then, then people are like, Oh, well you wouldn't do that to yourself. People shoot themselves true. in order to look innocent at crime scenes and yeah, shit. It's very true. It's so, very true. People. Yeah. And I mean, when you look at these, you're like, yeah, he probably could have, you know, yeah. scratched himself or I like took definitely. a tool to him or scraped some skin up. And that's why he had like little like blister looking things. Yeah. I mean, and there's so many things, dude. I was just reading all the things that glow under black lights, like even laundry detergent. He yeah. could have put so many different things on them to make it look like. Well, there's nothing scientific about saying that just because my wounds glow, that equals alien abduction. Or <laughs> yeah. something. That doesn't <laughs> compute, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So again, it's another, another claim that he has, but he, and he could be copying someone else. Cause I don't, I'm not saying I don't believe anyone yeah, story right. that claims to it's be abducted. Impossible. No, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's actually likely that it could be happening, but I just, I don't know. You have to be very skeptical with this kind of stuff. So we don't end up believing everything. Cause if you don't believe, if you don't stand for anything, you fall for everything, right? Yeah. It's very true. If you believe bullshit, then you're full of shit. That's it. <laughs> Pretty much. You don't want to be full of bullshit. So be skeptical. Yeah. It's, it's healthy to have, it is to be a skeptic. It's good. Not saying, to, I mean, not to some extent, you have yeah. to make your own decision at the end of right. the day, but until you get to that decision, have a skeptical mindset towards things or, or else just, you, there is so many things to get fooled by in this world. But like with his story, it just takes common sense. Like it yeah, ain't like it's really rocket not that, science to like, yeah figure out if his stuff is yeah. real or not. Yeah. And if people are going to call me like un like biased because I don't agree with him, <laughs> come. No, it's fine. I mean, you can, yeah, it's fine to disagree with him. Yeah. So over the next couple of years, um, in the early two thousands, he claims to have been abducted a number of times. One particular instance, uh, that was weird that happened to him was on September 30th, 2001. He said it was rush hour and Stan had just gotten off work and was headed home when he noticed a spotlight illuminating the ground next to him, the beam of light then made a sweep over his car. At first, he assumed it was a police helicopter, but when he noticed the expressions on the faces of the other drivers at the intersection, he knew that it was more than that. And as he strained to get a better look at what had just beamed his car, he realized that what everyone was looking at was a UFO. Not long after he spotted the UFO, it quickly flew over a park full of people called Old Stone House Park, and there were many witnesses, which is true. And there was there is a clip. At, uh, I don't think I'll put it in here, mm -hmm. but there is a quick little clip of him filming a bunch of people at a park, which, yeah, he probably could have got a bunch of people together and, and faked it. But is it possible they saw something? Yeah, it is possible. Yeah, I mean, it definitely could be possible. What is that? It looks like a hot air balloon with like. Hmm. I know, right? So 
And he says that the footage that he took, he actually, um, he gave, it made like Entertainment Tonight. And supposedly, according to him, Entertainment Tonight sent it to NASA. And NASA could not explain the UFO, which, again, no proof that any of that happened. This is on his website, which is weird that. Why would NASA communicate with you privately and not like. And with Entertainment say, Tonight, working with NASA <laughs> makes no sense. And what I just realized like they too, have the hookups, they like yeah. have the contact. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, we'll just uh yeah, hit we... up our contact at NASA to have them look at this fucking <laughs> jack o' lantern flying around in the air. No, it's it's funny because you know the info that I'm reading through is from was from his actual website and he it was written in third person, like talking about Stan. Oh, dude, that's so now I'm obvi- officially done. <laughs> I'm officially no, done. We're barely into I'm this sorry. and you're over. I'm sorry, but I can't handle it when people talk about themselves he in third wrote person. About that shows this. his ego. Right. And how yeah. And and the fact ego. that he runs around saying, I'm a star seed, I'm the chosen <laughs> one. Like, dude. He has yeah. a huge ego, and I don't, I don't know. That gives me even more reason to distrust him. But not only that, but he said this UFO that they all saw beamed his car, uh-huh. beamed his car up, and and a woman, <laughs> he claims, wrote her wrote him a letter saying that, hey, I happened to take this picture, or my grandfather happened to take this picture, and he says that the picture ha- actually proves that something is being beamed up to this UFO that is there. And I mean, it looks, I don't know. It kind of looks like maybe some, it does look like there's kind of like this beam coming down from the bottom, but I don't know if it's a car being beamed. It's too far away too. It's like, why would there be a beam coming from a UFO like way far away versus like on the ground? It's very weird. It's very weird. It is. So as time goes on in July, 2002, the stress of all that had happened was almost too much for Stan Romanek to bear. He wrote this, by the way. <laughs> the fact that he wrote that about himself, but could be his wife. I he sounds like could what be is he, wife. Carrie Bradshaw? The fuck? <laughs> it was too much to bear. Oh my god! So the researchers involved with this he case suggested that he seek guy. some sort of counseling. <laughs> Good Not idea. a bad idea. <laughs> Uncertain on what to do, it was decided that hypnotherapy might be the answer, which actually is a great form of therapy and. Uh, memory regression, things like that for uh, alien abduction victims. A lot of people do go through hypno uh, therapy in order to recall experiences or abductions like uh, one particular Travis Walton. He's his, his story is very interesting um, and honestly much more believable than stands, but um, he did that and that's how he recalled in great detail everything. So Stan decided to go this route and during the session, the therapist asked Stan if he re- Uh, If he remembered any strange writing or symbols from his experiences and to everyone's amazement, Stan in a matter of seconds wrote a page full of complex equations well beyond his capabilities. One of which was an electron structure for an element that did not exist at the time. He wrote element 115. He wrote out element 115. Right. But this is after element 115 and Bob Lazar all happened and all okay, that. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I was going to ask. Is this before or after Bob Lazar? It's after, it's definitely after Bob Lazar. Bob yeah. Lazar, for those of you do, who didn't see our episode on him, he, when did he come forward with information? Like in the seventies? Sixties. Yeah. Sixties like, yeah. almost. God, it was early yeah. with element 115. So he could have easily memorized these things right. and spit them back out. Yes, exactly. It's possible. But it would so. be, you know, I will say, as a dyslexic person, it'd be fucking hard. Because, I mean, these are big equations. And to remember all of it and get it all right with no mistakes. That's, In a small amount of time is difficult. For and under sure. pressure. So, so here, here's, uh, here's him doing sort this. sort of impressive. You know, when Deborah took me through the regressions, I started reliving all the pain. His I therapy. Uh, vividly therapist. remembering everything, every nuance, every sound, every painful experience, everything that happened. The most profound thing that happened to me was the part that um, I started writing down these symbols that I had stuck in my head. She asked me, so do you remember, what do you remember? I said, I have these symbols in my head. I have these weird things in my head. She goes, can you write them down? She gave me a big pad of uh, paper <clears throat> and um, I think a marker. And I just start. <laughs> I remember the symbols really clear. Oh, you, can you describe Oh, them? God, I can write them down for you. Oh, God, I can write them down for you. Mm. 
So this is where he writes out this like these are the images that, sh that equation. I got in my head. So essentially, what he writes out is the Drake equation, which is Fermi's paradox. It's complicated as fuck. It's, it is a, it is a complicated. It's not complicated to draw. That's the thing to just yeah. learn how to write it out. It's not like yeah. super crazy. And if you did write something over and over and over again, even the most complex equation, you can learn. Yeah, exactly. So. It's not that impressive. But he claims that he knew nothing about this. He had no idea what this was. He really didn't possess the capability on, on his own to even do this. So a lot of people saw this and they're like, wow, this is amazing for him to do this. Nobody knew what it was until like a physicist looked at it and they're like, oh yeah, you wrote the Drake equation, which just so happens to be like the equation for computing uh, the probability of alien life, to, you know, right. based upon how many galaxies there are, the, the pro, you know, how many how what's the chance of there being aliens essentially in mm -hmm. the universe we have a whole episode the on the fermi paradox we do. don't we do it was like episode three i think did we do a whole episode on it yeah on well on all the theories about where yeah. the aliens are and yeah stuff. that was a fun episode actually yeah it was a long back in the the back old days that was over a year ago that we did that wow i honestly can't believe we've been podcasting that long yeah already it's been so fun so he so he starts writing equations and he goes on to write um throughout his uh, hypnotherapy sessions he starts writing like uh, arabic symbols like trying to say that they're weird like kind of alien symbols but people are like dude those are arabic <laughs> like um there's been other uh, equations that he's written out that you know physicists are like yeah i mean that's a you know pretty pretty complex equation but none of the things that he writes out are like non groundbreaking you know, yeah like things that don't exist yet or right. anything like that he no one else has to offer right it's just copying it's yeah like a it's parrot. all available yeah it's all already available. Yeah. so that's that's what he did so may 31st 2003 there was so much activity surrounding stan that researchers involved with stan's case decided to install surveillance cameras in and around his home according again according to stan and this is where uh they capture the amazing event of one of these surveillance cameras which is the um yeah so they put like a camera on the side of his house and it's like facing like this weird angle. Um, I'll show you it in a minute, but not long after in July, the peeping Tom comes <laughs> to the house. This is my favorite part. <laughs> this is one of the best parts. This for is sure. like when I first watched this movie, I was trying to be super unbiased, obviously. And I like from the jump, I was trying to believe him and I, he almost had me up until this scene. As soon as I saw the scene, I was like, this stands this is a make stand. it or break it for anybody for yeah sure, for everybody and some people really believe this and it's okay if you've watched this and you've you've believed it i really don't want to make anyone feel dumb no you can believe whatever either. you want we don't care or if you still believe it i don't want to like hurt anyone's feelings of course i'm just you know gotta be real with my opinions so this video <laughs> has been kind of labeled on the internet has gone viral um in the past this and so been called the boo video and uh <laughs> yeah you just got to see it to know what we're saying he's like I got peeping toms so he's setting up the camera for the window there's a strange hops his hops are so funny watch his fucking jumps it's like it seems so acted out right, go so over exaggerated like what was that what is he a ballerina <laughs> Then he goes, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> sure, dude. <laughs> and like two seconds later, there's a flash of light. And then watch the bottom. Holy shit. <laughs> a head pops up. It's looking in his house. It's come all the way here just to look in his house. We've got what looks like to be a little gray alien with his eyes just oh <laughs> then he just gone. pops his head away. <laughs> it looks like a fucking puppet. So the movement was just uh, oh 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 and he's, he's back. back. <laughs> he's back. He's poking his head. He's like, where'd that guy go? Where does Starseed? <laughs> and he's gone again. 
I think I saw the little bastard, which he's still pretending he thinks is a peeping Tom. And now he's just realized, look at those jumps. Oh, man, what is that? Like, as if it's a raccoon or something outside. That is such Come. a strange response to a fucking alien outside. Are you kidding me? I'd be like, holy... F you guys know exactly what I'd say because you know how bad my language is, but... Okay, yeah. The fuck is that? No. And, and the thing that struck me, too, is, like, if you were really, like, you know, if you didn't know that this was going to happen and you were looking for a peeping Tom, like, wouldn't you put the camera closer to the window? And we're yes. like looking out the window. Yes. Why would it be like just the perfect length back to get the whole window in the frame? Yes. And then, yeah, set it up and then be like, oh, I'm going to bed. And then, you know, enough time passes where Stan could have easily ran around to the backyard. Yeah. Grabbed his little alien on a stick and put him up in the window. Yeah. And, <laughs> and make him show up in his footage. And that's the, the thing about it is it's like. It's just like his actions and the way he's talking and walking and reacting and hopping yes, around. Yes, he doesn't make a convincing argument no, for that. No, it all. looks like acting. It looks like if you were to try to stage a alien hoax, that's exactly how you'd probably try and to act. badly, badly, it's and bad. Shit. That's the thing about this is he's not even remotely convincing to me. Like from the it's beginning, I don't think he's. It's really not even. He's not good at lying. Even. No, no, it it, it just is. Yeah, I mean, for a lot, so for a lot of people, they, as soon as they saw that, they're like, yep, this is a complete hoax. Yeah. You know, this guy's full of shit and, you know, he's making all of his experiences up for whatever reason, you know. And I mean, the alien, well, how does it look? Does it look like a puppet? It looks like something fake. I think it looks like someone inside of something. Like, I think it's probably Stan with like a mask or like a little costume. Because, yeah. you know what I think? Um, I think he may have cut the camera footage when there's that flash to like, cause you can easily make a cut there because there's that. Right. Yeah. That blink. Right. Yeah. So, and that might even be why that's in there. So he couldn't cut the time and have time to go out there. Cause he's really trying to make people believe, believe he presses record and then Shit 20 seconds yeah. after he leaves, the things looking in his house. Like really dude. <laughs> What did he How call? What dumb did he call do you think it people are? That little bastard. Yeah, is that I called him call? a little bastard. Got gotcha, you, a little bastard. Because he's pretending that he thinks it's a peeping tom, a peeping like tom. a person or a kid or something that's looking through his windows, and little does he know it's a gray alien from fifty-five trillion light years away come to Mister uh, Stan Romanek's house to uh, have a chat with Starseed. Stereotypical yeah. looking alien. Yeah, it exactly. looks like a Halloween costume. <laughs> It's so cringe. It's not convincing. No. And, I mean. Not even slightly. So as we all know, credit is something that we all have. And we all have to have a somewhat decent credit score in order to buy things. But if you're like me and in our lives have ever been at a point where you can't get financing for things that you want to buy or loans because of your credit score, that really sucks. And especially when you're trying to get something that costs, you know, maybe a bit more money than you've wanted to spend, but you're not able to get that financing because, you know, your credit is not where it should be. But today I want to talk to you about Zebit. Zebit is actually an interest free or zero interest credit option for all members, no matter what your credit score is. They allow you to buy what you want and need and pay over time with zero interest. Yes, you heard that right. This is a zero interest financing option. With Zebit, there's zero cost to join, zero membership fees and zero late fees. Like I said, no credit score is needed. Your account is not determined by your credit score, actually. They do not check it whatsoever and it does not impact your credit score, obviously, if they don't check it. So. Zebit is basically a huge marketplace with everyday items at everyday prices. They have more than 50,000 products in their marketplace with brand names like Xbox, Sony, Apple, GoPro, Fitbit. I mean, they've got furniture, electronics. They literally have a wide range of things. So you're probably wondering, Josh, is there a catch to Zebit? There is no catch whatsoever. It is what it is. It's zero membership fees, zero interest financing. But if you're interested in checking out Zebit, all you got to do is go to zebit.com slash mile higher and for 2,500 interest free credit offer. Again, that's zebit.com slash mile higher for that 2,500 interest free credit offer with Zebit. Some guys are terrible at taking care of their health, whether it's a knee injury, bad back or something worse. Guys are sometimes more comfortable with just rubbing some dirt on it and moving on rather than seeing the doctor. I have been there. I've done that. 
There's been times where I, I feel, you know, sick or there's something going on and I don't want to go to the doctor just because it's such a hassle. And then you got to go see some stranger usually. And yeah, so it's not a very enjoyable experience, but that is where Roman comes in because a lot of people don't want to go to the doctor, especially for erectile dysfunction. I mean, that's pretty embarrassing if you're a guy. So studies show that 70% of guys who experience ED don't get treated for it. Thankfully, Roman has created an easy way to get checked out by a doctor and get treated for ED online. So you don't even have to leave your house. Roman is a one-stop shop where you can chat with a licensed U.S. physician who can treat ED and if safe and appropriate, ship medication right to your doors. All you have to do is visit GetRoman.com slash MileHire, complete an online visit, chat with a doctor, and if the doctor decides it would be safe and appropriate, they'll ship genuine medication right to your door in discreet, unmarked packaging. For a free online visit, go to GetRoman.com slash MileHire. That's GetRoman.com slash MileHire for a free online visit. Yeah. And people are like, well, the, the eyes blink and, but that can all easily be faked, you know? And, and a lot of these Halloween things yeah. and, you know, can easily have that capability. Oh yeah. And Dude, just the in, way like, that movies it goes, and stuff, they yeah. have that in like the, the yeah, film world, right. they have things that True. blink and do stuff. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so. eh, it, it's interesting to say the least. So, so after this happens, um, Shortly thereafter, a few months later in October, he says he, he kept waking up outside. Just randomly, he'd wake up outside and he'd have a bloody nose and he'd be pissing blood, he says. <laughs> Sorry, what? And yeah, apparently. Ouch. Yeah. And this and this is also the time where um, the surveillance footage, which I had mentioned earlier, the. Uh, the footage where the beam of light on the side of the house, mm -hmm. that whole thing happens. Yeah. And yeah, he thinks that essentially a UFO beam tried to beam his house or beam the side of it. And I don't know, you make up your decision once you think of this. So it's just surveillance footage. Flash of light. Okay, there's the beam. So the next day, he goes out there and apparently there's a clearing on the side it of the... It looks like he like, threw a bucket of bleach <laughs> Onto a really dirty house. <laughs> okay, first, let, for, back up. Talk about the beam for a sec. What do you think of that beam? What was happening there? Do you think a UFO uh, flew over his house no. and like shined a light over the ground? Can we back up again? I want to see it one more time. Yeah. So there's this beam. Okay. Nope. The bloody oh, nose. <laughs> really hard to find now. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Just, well, whatever. you know what it looked like. Um. Yeah. I mean, it didn't. I didn't catch it long enough to really like get I a mean, good look at it, but it didn't look like anything that <laughs> hard that to crazy. fake. And a lot um, of people say it literally looks like he got a big like flashlight. Like you can get those big old flashlights that are, you know, really powerful. Yeah. And just like ran by got on the roof and then literally like you could shine it down yeah. on the ground. It, it literally looks like that. It, yeah. does, it looks like a flashlight cause it's got the, the ring in the middle is like really strong and then mm -hmm. it kind of gets faint around the edges. Yeah. And I'm just like, uh, mm. you know, I'd be impressed with his whole, the whole thing with the house. If it was like an alien intricate design crop circle type thing into the dirt of his house, but it's not, it literally just looks like someone threw a, even a bucket of water at it. Like the way that it falls down. Looks yeah, like it, it does. It goes from smaller to bigger. It right. literally just looks like he poured bleach over or water over area. the camera and it dripped down. Yeah. And then he cleaned up the sides, made it look a little more shaped. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, look how uh, dirty the house is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't. It's not like it's uh, green or it's burned or. It's white. There's a material. Yeah. No, it's just like it. It's the house. It looks just like cleaned. it got cleaned up. Yeah. It's just cleaned. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that's just so another bullshit. Yeah. So the next day he goes out there, he discovers the the siding's been cleaned, quote unquote. And then he says just some random crew shows up at his house. Oh yeah, this is so funny. <laughs> shows up at his house and 
Yeah, they, you know, replace the siding and he doesn't know who they are. The landlord doesn't know who they are. Well, he claims that literally people just showed up from some company. Didn't yeah. he like have a name for it or no? No, there was no name, he said. Or there was a name, but they didn't exist. He looked them up. Yeah, there was a name. It didn't exist. But they look like regular dudes. And so... A hundred percent. He, for whatever reason, while they're there, he thinks that the landlord sent them. He just assumes the landlord sent them. And he decides to go out and film them for some reason. Like, unless you didn't know in advance that the landlord did not send them, why would you be filming them? He's out there filming them from behind. Who goes out and films people yeah. working on their house? Like, what yeah. a creep. This guy, you could, it was like this close to seeing a plumber crack. Yeah. It was just like some dude from behind. And then he just was like, film. he didn't even go up close to them either. No, and he didn't get their faces. No, and, and then the footage he shows doesn't even, yeah, it's all zoomed away. And then, and then he, he's like, and then later that day, I got a call from my landlord that said he didn't send the people. Right. And I looked at the company and they didn't exist. They didn't and exist. And they didn't, they don't look like weird. They don't look like uh, men in black undercover. They just look like regular dudes that would be doing something like this. So, yeah, there's nothing <laughs> there's out of nothing the ordinary. Because I think what people. he's trying to allude to is that they're aliens. N- no, or like sent government. By like literally, um, some like men in black type shit yeah, where I'm, they're like yeah. coming to like cover up something, or maybe yeah, or maybe they are alien. Maybe he thinks they're like aliens that are coming to cover up how clean your house is, clean the rest of it. <laughs> what are they doing in the video? They're like cleaning the rest of the house. And for all we know, he could have just paid them to replace yeah, the siding. He did. I'm telling you guys, he did. <laughs> God. That's the thing is like, where's the landlord? Then? Yeah. Yeah. Where's Get the, the landlord on the documentary to say interview? I didn't send these guys. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. 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 No. Or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Anyone anything. else literally. Yeah. He can't. He That's never has thing. people to back him up. It's it's rare that he does. It is rare. And it's mostly people who are super close to him that actually back him up. It's right. no one that's like. No, nobody. You know, really, water. Yeah. Yeah. So it gets even better, though. It does. <laughs> he has another encounter on March 5th, 2005, late at night. Stan had fallen asleep while installing software on the family computer. Startled by a sound and the silhouette of what looked like to be a small naked figure running into the kitchen, Stan got up to investigate. Remembering that his 12-year-old stepson had friends spending the night, so he assumed that it was just some, uh, some kind of dare or practical joke or just like goofing off and going into the kitchen, whatever. So he decided to grab his camcorder to like embarrass. Remember he was talking about this. He, he was like, I'm going to grab my camcorder, my naked stepson, record him for blackmail. Or he said something like embarrass him. He, yeah. he literally, that was his explanation. You sound like a predator, this. dude. It, the whole, it's uh, creepy, yeah. you know, child porn thing makes sense with that. Oh, you just gave it away. But um, oh, I thought you said it in the beginning. No, you said he's a sex offender. I know, but I didn't say what for, but it's, it's fine. Okay, now, you well, know, who cares? <laughs> the dude know. gets nabbed for having child porn in his computer so this yeah this kind of makes some sense but um so he decides to go check out the house of this camcorder and this is what happens to him what's going on 3 10 a.m oh well oh my god it's in his house holy shit what the fuck is that (laughs) oh my god what's it doing holy shit oh man Oh my god, I can't believe it. I can't it. believe it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Camera goes dark. Holy shit. Doesn't go outside. Just. Oh my god. Is it... I can't see it anymore. Where'd it go? I can't believe that. I can't believe what I just freaking saw. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's amazing. Hell yeah. Dude, stop talking. So. Oh my god. What? I like he's on a live stream or something. Like he's already. Like, why would you talk that much? If I had something like that, I would shut up and try to film it. Why are you talking so much? You're probably scaring it. It's like he's, he's acting as if he knows he's going to try to be right, showing this to right. a lot of people. Mm-hmm. He's concerned about what the watcher is going to be hearing and yeah. he's trying to make it more convincing but it in fact makes it less convincing him to me. talking and him like freaking out and yeah. what he says and how he says it the yeah. tone 
yeah. just doesn't seem legitimate to me. No, it doesn't. And like, how? how God, what the Why fuck would is it that? Be at your house, like for what? For Stan? This makes no sense. Right. Well, They've come here multiple times for Stan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's being visited. <laughs> and if they're if they're gonna come in your house, like, why are they hiding from you? Yeah. Why don't they the just come in? in? Like, let yeah. themselves in. Like, yeah. Why aren't they teleporting their asses into the house versus <sighs> peeping? Conveniently, you never see the body too. That's another thing. Yeah, it's it only always looks like head. something on a stick. It's only yes, the head. That proves That's, that it's something on a stick. That proves it pretty yep. much. Yep. Because what alien in their right mind is just going to poke their Why head Why are they out? concerned about hiding their feet and shit? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And dude, come on. Any type of real... I feel like if an alien has the technology to come all the way here, they probably also have a way to just remote view you from space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do they need to come break into your house to see you? Like, that's their <laughs> investigation. You, yeah. They're going to come all the way here for you? And then play, like, some strangers game where they're like, peeping through <laughs> yeah. your window like a horror movie like we're watching you stand oh my god what the frick is that what's it doing there's another video right is it's coming right is there's one more of him popping his head out from the no. side of the house no there's just the two two clips of it okay yeah okay. there's the window where he pops up and then and the, the sliding side. door okay yes that's, that's what I was literally about. the only ones okay um <laughs> where you so actually fake. see where you actually see the like live alien mm-hmm so yeah so at this point in time stan is saying he's experiencing something called high strangeness which is just like when paranormal events happen around him and he said that evening stan and his wife heard noises in the backyard on or this is september 27 2005 so not the same day as the uh the alien but the, he said he goes outside and takes pictures and then all of a sudden they see some orbs flying around and he takes pictures of them but these are like, eh, it's pretty obvious that they're either uh, edited in or most likely they're like dust specks reflecting the flash. So he's like taking a flash outside and there's stuff flying around through the air. So it kind of looks like there could be, yeah, it could be something uh, flying around. Um, but he takes, and I mean, they're pretty big though. Um, but again, I mean, we don't know if this is edited footage or anything. I mean, we starting to realize that he probably is editing stuff. Yeah. But he like zooms in on a picture of one of the orbs and he said it had a face. It looks like it has like a little smiley face. Yeah. I was just saying that one looks like it has, it looks like, um, like in the, the bear in the big blue house, you know how the moon's like a yeah. face. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. yeah. It's literally looks like a little moon. Like he, if you know what that is, like Photoshop the moon face. on. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but even better. He's out there photographing orbs that night and he just so happens to like take an angled picture down of his deck and lo and behold, there Without is a, its feet. again, <laughs> a little gray alien peering through the, the bars of the deck. It doesn't even look like it's peering through whatever that is. Looked like it's propped up on a fucking stick or inserted even into it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And what I noticed too is like the picture of this alien is, doesn't even look remotely like the other ones that he saw. <laughs> he just saw. So uh, now I'm thinking like this dude has got multiple species of gray aliens <laughs> visiting him in okay. his home in Colorado Springs. And then shit just gets weirder from here. This is when he starts getting calls from somebody, which he calls Audrey. So let's listen to this. This is great. Press seven. Reply. Press eight. Save. Press nine. More options. Press zero. Resave. Urgent message. I apologize for being so forward. It Cold did not take effect. us yeah. long to get your phone numbers. Our surveillance is mostly for passive monitoring, but it does come in handy. I cannot tell you who I am for safety reasons, but I can tell you that your perceptions of Stan Romanik and... His experiences are real. As you have probably noticed, Stan is slightly different. The way he thinks, the way he perceives the world, seems to be a little more advanced than usual. The interesting thing is that Stan has no idea who he really is. Of course it's about is. him. Yeah, yeah. This guy is a massive okay, idiot. Lisa, hit the button. One old message. Hello. 
Dan and Lisa. My intention is not to scare or alarm you, but to warn you. It is great that you are back in Colorado, but Colorado Springs was not a good idea. It seems you have moved into their backyard. Now it is easy for them to <laughs> Shut get down there. I know how stubborn you are, Starseed, but please heed this warning and know that Lisa and the children are at risk also. Now listen, Starseed. You know you are different. Follow your instincts and stay alert. This is too important. Soon it will all be revealed. And Starseed, do not be afraid of what you are. Don't be afraid, Stan. You are special. Sure, dude. So, yeah, so he's he starts getting and he gets a bunch of like messages like that from an unknown source. I, I guess from the aliens are speaking to him, yeah. warning him about, I assume, like the, the government, government is yeah. spying on him and knows that he's a star seed and knows that he's so interacting like with these aliens. Yeah. And so he's got to be careful, man. I mean, you know, you can't don't you might be in danger from the men in black. They might come and get you because mm. uh, you're special. Yeah. He does. Why is why can they? Why is Colorado Springs so easy to, for them to get to? Well, because there is a huge military base down there. Cheyenne Mountain. Oh, yeah. So, no, there definitely yeah. is. Yeah. So it's possible that that's the connection, though. Right. He, and he could he be making. seeing. That's another reason why a lot of his UFOs could be military things. Yeah, it's true. Like, yeah, because he's close too. to that, and people see stuff in Colorado Springs all the time, and I'm sure a lot of it is military. It could because be. there's a lot more sightings and stuff near military bases. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because there is stuff there that we don't know. So he he essentially from that phone call or that message that he got, he claims that he not only has been abducted multiple times, but he is a very important person. And that the aliens have picked him to specifically bring their message to the people of the earth. And yeah, so he also claims to have another family, including seven alien human hybrid children, which we'll talk about more uh, in a minute. But like all star seeds, he basically infuses, you know, like we've, ta we've talked about this before and it's an interesting concept and mm -hmm. it combines spirituality with ufology um, but the way that he presents it is like he is like unique and special. Yeah. He is the star seed, the yeah. only star the seed only, yes. that will save Earth, essentially. I mean, that's kind of the narrative that he's creating is like, I am important. I'm having these experiences yeah. because I am this. And we, that by the chosen. way, do believe that the whole concept of star seeds could be real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for sure. I just don't believe he's one of them. Yeah. I just think or the one. Yeah. So this, so the news that Stan all of a sudden has like the space family. So he's got these hybrid alien children, which I mean, again, could, could this be possible? Absolutely. I mean, we did talk about the, the professor that believes aliens are here on earth breeding with humans. And honestly, I think it is it's a possibility. Could be possible. Absolutely. Yeah, it could be possible. But again, in Stan's case, I don't know because he's done things to le lead me to believe he's, deceiving people and i can't trust what he says yes but it's interesting that um so what ends up happening is stan meets uh this other woman named victoria who is also kind of in this world and in the circle with them and she believes that stan and her are being abducted together to parent alien hybrid children together <laughs> And this is where he loses even more credibility because let me tell you, this is an affair undercover, my friends. Yeah. Um, his poor he's wife is in the documentary and she's like, it was a little hard for me when she first started coming around, but yeah. And then she like, didn't they have, she found out that they had an affair and everything. I mean, they were spending time. I don't know if they like had an affair, like, well, they're, they're saying we have to raise babies together. So <laughs> yeah, I guess pretty much they admit it. Yeah. Yeah. They admit it. Yeah, I think I think she's talking about it. Stan basically was reliving his experiences. It wasn't even about remembering. So this is his wife, Lisa. And to sit there and watch as he physically experienced the pain inflicted on In him. In therapy. 
was very hard. It, it was just heartbreaking to watch. The memories he did have of his abductions and the woman that he, he remembered seeing her, he knew what she looked like, what she sounded like, was hard yeah. for me. But during these regressions, it all just came really, it became yeah. a reality for me. Yeah, so I, this this whole part is confusing to me because I'm pretty sure that so he thinks that he's he's being visited by children of his that are aliens. And there is like this picture that he supposedly <laughs> takes at a UFO conference where he speaks at. And the picture, yeah, is wild looking <laughs> like you remember that picture. Yeah, it's like has like elf ears, right? Yeah, and like the eyes clearly look like yeah, they've been like pulled up to up. its head. Yeah. Like, and I just want to know why this thing is chilling at an alien conference in a huge group of people, <laughs> like, and isn't being noticed at yeah. all. Yeah, it makes zero sense. It looks so fake. It looks like ugh, an elf from like the Santa Claus or something. Yeah, no, it's it's very it's really bad, weird, stupid. But things get even the the claims just keep coming. So in May of fifth of two thousand six, um, he has a knee injury. He says he like tore his ACL, but the doctor note that he showed said he just sprained it. But he says he he basically comes forward. He's like, yeah, I was abducted, and the aliens essentially fixed my knee. And then he goes into the backyard and locates his knee brace because his knee brace has been removed mysteriously from his leg and it's burnt to like ashes like somebody fucking torched it and then he sh presents these holes on his leg that are all in a row like right next to his knee where you know his bad knee that he said he went to the doctor for and yeah he <laughs> says that the injury's gone and there's no you know sure there's no more damage and like how are we supposed to believe that where's the doctor to yeah. come forward and say that no i was just gonna just check this real quick because oh yeah no sorry i wanted to play just play this because this is him talking to one of his alien children on the phone um with victoria mm. uh the actual human woman that uh he knows um yeah, they start talking to what he believes to be one of his children. Because during, basically during his hypnotherapy, he's he's remembering all these things, and he's he has a moment where he's like crying, and he's like, "Yeah, the children, the children, and you know, they cried when I left, and yeah, and they were hugging my knee." Yeah, basically saying like, "I'm daddy," and these aliens it are. It sounds it's crying. so inappropriate, and then it's especially weird. because he ends up getting yeah, and the it's, child porn charges because. It just makes it even creepier. It does. God, sorry, we have like a gnat in our, the room. Yes? Hi. We can hear you, this Kioma. Kioma, hello. Kioma, are you there? Oh, sweet little girl, we can hear you. Can you talk louder? Hello? I think somebody's playing a joke on us. You're silly. You're silly? Why am I silly? Okay, if this is Kioma, when are we going to see you in person again? That's why I'm calling. We might need to change your temperature. Oh my gosh! Hello? Interesting. So he's he talks to the phone. So that was the, the other thing I was going to mention is like, well, what about these strange phone calls he's having? How does that work? Well, mm -hmm. it's actually incredibly easy to create fake voices. Oh, yeah. Um, There's plenty of online voice and things online. like that where you can easily like record through a phone. And, and again, yeah. it's like. And the voice, the first one, the Audrey one, someone found it. Like I was reading this blogger who literally found the exact voice online. Yeah. Yeah. It was and like something you it's could not hard. For. It's not hard to do. Mm -hmm. 
So again, could he could he have faked it or is this legitimate? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty pretty obvious. So again, in two, December twenty seventh of two thousand seven, he said the family camera disappeared for a few days, and then it was later found hanging from the ceiling fan in the dining room. Which what the hell? That doesn't even make sense, Stan. No, that really doesn't. <laughs> Nobody saw a camera hanging in the dining room? Or I guess it just <laughs> magically showed up there. But then he said when they went to check the pictures, they noticed two extra pictures on it. And guess what? What? The aliens that have been visiting him took a selfie. <laughs> Shut up. So there's two images. Was this in the documentary? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Oh yes, I remember these now. <laughs> Two images on It looks like they're like confused. Yeah, it's like even what is, is that this? it doesn't even have a nose. It looks like like uh Again. Voldemort. Voldemort or yeah. whatever. What's his name? Is it Voldemort? Voldemort? I'm going to get like Oh, Harry apart. Potter? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, is it? God, you don't know who that Well, one time I said his name wrong and someone like Voldemort out. has a nose still. He has like a slit. Slitted okay, so nose. This yeah. is even worse than him. Worse. Absolutely worse. And that I looks like how so fake that looks like a super overexposed photo that's been yeah. photoshopped yeah, it does. in the dark, like a super overexposed photo that was taken in the dark with a flash and then was slightly edited. Yeah. That'd be my best guess. Look at the lip. You can even tell like the right, the left side of the lip looks so different than the other side. It looks so fake. And again, to me. it doesn't even look like the same alien that we've seen before, yeah. which I mean, it could be absolutely. Yeah. What are, that looks like, that looks so stupid. It could even be the same. Wow, well, I can't believe he had the balls to really say that it took a selfie. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's so dumb. It like holds the camera. It's like, what did this do? Like, yeah. I just flew in a rocket ship yeah, from yeah, space, yeah. but I don't know what a camera is. I just teleported here, yet I can't use this fucking ancient gadget you call a camera. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's fishy for sure. So now the time is 2008 and. Stan finally decides that all this paranormal stuff's really weird and I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to ask for help from some uh, renowned paranormal investigators. And they came to his house and this is what they had to say about the evidence that Stan showed. So the guy is actually named Brian Bonner and he's the head of the Rocky Mountain Paranormal Research Society. Yes. And he said, quote unquote, we saw this guy trying to pass off things that looked paranormal as something related to aliens. And he says, we have been recreating Roman X photos and videos for several years to disprove him. That's mm. because the same type of evidence once used by paranormal scientists to indicate the presence of ghosts is now being doctored by amateurs as proof of alien life. Because he took yeah. the electromagnetic meter, the EVP meter as well. There's plenty of times where he's out there like, and that's what's so weird about this whole thing is Stan not only believes he's being visited by aliens, but he also believes there's literally shadow people running around his house. And there's also, remember the pictures of yeah. the shadow people? Mm -hmm. He's clearly into like the paranormal. Yeah, 100%. He'd probably love our podcast. <laughs> Maybe he knows Stan, if you're out there, why don't you come on the show? <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, so these guys, these paranormal investigators actually said they recreated his video and spent 90 bucks and got <laughs> went to... Uh, rented a dummy old. alien from a costume shop and then used some special effects to make the giant eyes appear to blink because Stan's whole like rebuttal to that was like some an expert told me it would cost fifty thousand dollars to fake the alien footage why would I do that I can't even afford that blah 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 but it was 50 but they bucks. proved it was 90, 90 bucks to do it and there's a clip of it somewhere I tried to find it but um you there's a clip of that the recreated one and it's better than <laughs> yeah better than uh mr roman x footage but the evidence that he had presented s since he first reported contact in late 2000 is obviously so full of red flags um one photo posted on roman x website shows what he interprets to be a ufo covered in bubble like pods and then he's he encountered uh the flying saucer one as well as a sphere um and what's interesting is that uh, this paranormal investigator said that Romanek tried to talk with the aliens using uh, the box, uh, I believe like a spirit box, or uh, he, he calls it the Frank's box gadget, a modified car radio that picks up random snippets of speech from AM stations in an attempt to communicate with the dead. Yeah, like a spirit box is essentially, I think, what, what he's talking about. So yeah. he tried to communicate that way as well. 
So wait, hang on. This is really interesting though that they did the par- the Rocky Mountain Paranormal Society. Group. Yeah. Yeah, they they were able to make it blink with just really basic special effects on a computer. Yeah, it's not hard. So yeah, it's not hard. The blinking does not mean shit. They basically proved that he could have easily yeah. doctored that up and made mm-hmm. it look like the way that it did. So as time continues on, he is now gotten some fame from all of these crazy experiences happening to him. And he's starting to be invited to speak at UFO uh, events and conferences and things like that. And he said on his way to the UFO Congress conference in Arizona in 2010, he was um, on the plane and he noticed a UFO flying by, which, yeah, I mean, we, we hear about that all the time about UFOs flying by planes and things like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, could he have managed to capture that? But again, he, the, f- the photo is like, you know, not the greatest resolution and it's pretty easy to add a little something in there, you know, so we don't oh, know yeah. if it's authentic or not. Um, in 2011, over Easter, uh, they had company over at their house, Stan and his wife, Lisa, when someone suddenly noticed something running into Stan's office, grabbing, uh, grabbing, or he grabbed the camera, or Lisa grabbed the camera, and then ran into the office just in time to capture the shadowy figure standing by the bookcase. And he's got several pictures of this, and one which I was just like, dude, that just like completely ruins the <laughs> the shadow footage for you but you remember the picture he showed of the shadow person carrying one of his tv remotes yes, yes. he's like the shadow person grabbed the tv <laughs> remote it's like dude <laughs> what are you doing man what? and then yeah so things just keep happening to him and uh at 3 a.m on may 26 2011 uh stan and his wife were woken up because of rustling sounds coming from an adjacent room Fearing someone had broken in, Stan got up to check. But after searching the entire house, Stan decided to go back to bed and continue the search in the morning when there was better light. And the next morning, he found handprints outside of the window of the garden level room and footprints below the same window. And of course, these uh, footprints are like three fingered alien looking hands, easily probably faked. Um, But I mean, yeah, I don't know. They're small hands too. They're only the size of a dollar bill. So they're yeah. like small little alien hands. But again, if you rented like a dummy alien, mm-hmm, a prop, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. could easily take their like dummy hand and like make a print. I mean, that doesn't prove shit. Like, yeah. Like, come on, man. So by this time, it's 2013, and that's when the actual documentary gets made uh, for Stan. But it wasn't actually added to Netflix until July 2017 um, when it actually came out and really got attention. Uh, but the fact that he got a documentary at all is, I don't know, it's interesting because it's, it's honestly like, insane. It's and I think that's why I was thinking about it. I was like, why do so many people believe this? And I think because it was picked up by Netflix and it's on Netflix that people think it's like endorsed by Netflix or something. Yeah. Like because it's on there, it has some type some of credibility valid- to it. Yeah. yeah. You know? But that's um, not true at all. I mean, if you look at the ratings for it, just do a quick Google search of it and you will see the majority of people think it's just a a load of crap and but there are people that host. believe it like i know people yeah. that believe it yeah that, some people well, do did and then don't anymore but i mean we've gotten comments people do believe it so i th- i definitely think because it's on netflix people or like if this was the first alien thing that they have seen maybe yeah maybe you'd fall for it but i don't know there's just so many so much more convincing evidence out there yeah there is and what remember the remember the instance where he had you know friends over and he told them all to come outside and then he said that he saw a young girl in a jumpsuit standing <laughs> a, yeah he starts to get creepy as fuck during the documentary he starts like the way he was describing the little girl out standing in his yard watching him and yeah. then the pictures of the girl's yeah, face and that, it looks so photoshopped it yeah. doesn't even remotely look like the right lighting it looks no. like it looks like seriously like I said a Keebler elf. Yeah. Um, it looks like an elf straight chilling in his yard looking in at him. Mm-hmm. Um, a young it girl. It looks so stupid. And then he's like, this little girl. And he feels attachment to it. Remember, yeah. he cries. He yeah. cries because he sees this girl. He's like, it's so beautiful. And I assume he, he says it because he thinks this little girl is like his daughter, his hybrid yeah. alien daughter. Uh-huh. It's so bizarre mm-hmm. and weird and just honestly creepy. And he's like, he describes it as like, a woman but like a small they're like children yeah 
Yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's they just have blonde like, it's hair like, mm, and like, dude. Yeah. And then the child porn thing, it just. Well, that's what I'm. Doesn't look good, bro. Doesn't look good. That's all I'm going to say. And I think this just kind of really crushed his reputation oh, at all. If he had any cred at all, it was crushed when. And people, of course, like to say that this was faked by the government that he well, was that's what set he up. Says. Yeah. Well, and people think he's telling the truth. Well, this isn't. There is an interesting thing where it kind of supports his argument here. So and that, not that I don't believe the government wouldn't do something yeah, like that because yeah. I think they could for, and would. And that's what's so hard about this whole case, though, is like, you know, all of these things we like could like believe could happen. But his version of events and his evidence are just like, eh. it's like, dude, if you're so special, like, why don't you have them send you something like some good evidence be like give me something that people actually fucking believe like some give footage me something of the no one's ever give me element 115 to and, bring to them and then they'll believe me like something like if they're working with you and they believe in you this much they think you're the the star seed and you have they alien can't provide children you with some good evidence and help you expose it and stuff you can't get a selfie with your alien daughter together yeah, seriously. Like, she won't let you take a pic. <laughs> Can you imagine if he did have that? Yeah, though? just sound that just sounds so weird. That and that's what's so weird about it, because what ends up happening is on February 13, 2014, shortly after his documentary is produced, Stan Romanak is arrested on child porn charges. So Stan and his wife Lisa at the time denied the charges and claimed that their home computer was hacked in an effort to silence him and warn other experiencers or alien abductees not to speak out. But obviously the authorities tell a different story. I will say that there is, it is possible and there has been reported cases where there's been viruses that have, you know, have the ability to plant that essentially on your computer and even instances where the NSA has infected, uh, people's machines and things like that in the past. No. Is it possible that it could have been government? Yes. yes but when you is when, it likely is it likely i don't know i don't think so personally but so literally they they did a search warrant on his house uh after doing an eight month long investigation which is a long time to be investigating someone and feeling like they had enough evidence to uh, execute a search warrant at his house in april 2013 and this was like the loveland police department which we we've been to loveland quite a bit so like we know this area we used to live up there um and yeah they they basically raided him but essentially the evidence that they had was in 2008 the homeland security actually uh, an agent there discovered images traced from a peer-to-peer file sharing network so like a torrenting type yeah. site mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um with that type of content back to his ip address which is his computer identifies which his makes computer sense. that's yeah. how they that's how thorn is finding people too yeah it's all digital and yeah. and you, you leave traces online and everything can be traced back to you. Yep. It's getting better and better too. And when they initially <laughs> found um, the porn back in 2008, they didn't do anything because the Loveland department didn't have a cyber crimes unit at the time. So they, uh, they, they couldn't do anything. But then again, again, the Homeland security found child porn traced back to Stan's computer. And according to the report from them, they said that the, uh, pictures contain images of girls that span an age range of approximately five years old to twelve years old, and the, you know, you know what that you know what that kind of porn is. It's very so disturbing and upsetting. gross. Yeah. It's just disgusting. And I think that's why, like, I have I know so much about that whole world because I've worked with Thorn for so long that this guy, like, as soon as I found that out about him, I really wasn't having it like at all. <laughs> and it makes it makes. And, and the argument, too, is like they're able to figure out exactly where, you know, he got it from and he went back again. You know, it was found in 2008. What are the chances of the same virus? He gets the same virus again and yeah, reinfects sure. him in 2013. And then especially once, you know, this whole story and yeah, then and the it girl lines up with the little the, girl and the, yeah. the mating. And I don't know. I'm just I'm creeped out by him. He like he gives me predator vibes. I don't like it. But what's crazy and actually kind of helps his argument that he was set up and this is all like a setup on him. The detectives in the case actually got in trouble and had their own like lawsuit and trial because one of them like gave Stan a heads up about the investigation and stuff and Stan erased his hard drive. Ah, so they erased his hard drive 
And so they only found USB drives with stuff on it. Oh. So it, it, the plot thickens. Yeah. Hell. And like a police wow. officer got wrapped up into it. It was like this whole big ass case up there Damn. Um, that took place. I didn't know that. Yeah. That and it, and it ultimately helped him avoid getting charged with distribution and going to jail. Or something. And going to jail. Yeah. Because what happened was is that um, the jury basically said that there wasn't enough evidence to determine that he had been distributing it because he yeah. probably got destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, but he was only charged for possession of the the images or video or whatever. So how they destroy his hard drive? Like they literally broke it or something. Well, you can you can like format it to a point where nothing can essentially nothing can be recovered from it. Okay. So you can really like clean it. But that takes a lot of time and probably would have taken somebody giving him a heads up. You can't just like last minute hit delete and then yeah. all your shit's yeah. gone. Cause just cause it's deleted doesn't mean it's actually yeah. gone. Someone would have had to like yeah, someone. Yeah. Someone gave him the, the heads up. So Stan ended up avoiding jail time and cause he was only charged with um, the possession and not distribution, which would have been a more serious felony if he had been con uh, convicted of that. And he was sentenced to two years in a halfway house in order to register as a sex offender at the conclusion of, of the case. Not only that, but he is, sub, he is subject to 10 years of sex offender intensive supervised probation. He's barred from using computers or electronic devices without being monitored. Like even at his own fucking house? Yes. What? Yeah. They can do that? Yeah. That seems so crazy to me. Yeah, I don't know exactly how, but I'm pretty sure. Maybe public devices? No. Well, think about it. Like, what? What? You can't what would ever be, be on a computer again, though. Not without being supervised. So he probably has a special computer, or something with their oh, stuff set up. But on they're it. not standing behind him no, watching. No, 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 oh, no. Okay, yeah. He probably no, no, no. Has that's a recorded, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I literally thought like to use the <laughs> computer, someone had to come over and like watch him. I was like, no. that's a little much. No. But yeah, that makes sense. They would keep an eye on what he's doing on the computer. Absolutely. And he's I feel not, like there's ways to get around that, though. Oh like yeah, get your own, get a different computer. Lie. Yeah, but if he does and he gets caught, caught. he's gonna go to prison. Yeah, and he he's not gonna do well in prison. Let's just say that. Like, mm -mm. he's gonna have a rough time in in prison. So he avoided jail time, and really, I mean, he got the best case scenario uh, mm -hmm. as far as the outcome goes for his uh, case. Um, so that that's kind of where the story ends, but. That's not where it ends for Stan because Stan and, and what makes this even more fishy is like people that claim to have these experiences, these profound paranormal experiences do like to monetize it, which I, I mean, I get. Mm -hmm. So Stan actually wrote three different books. Mm -hmm. And in these books, though, he goes into all this crazy detail about how the aliens have told them how the moon was created. How? Oh, how? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's in his book the orion messages or something um and apparently he's he's now able to channel these aliens mm -hmm. he they speak through him now and there's some wild wild footage um but before that actually wanted to show you a quick um or actually you know i'll just link it because you guys can watch it but there's an actual clip of him faking phenomena do you want to see it yeah i want to see it okay let's so, go and do it you're probably wondering, like, has any has he ever been caught faking stuff? Not only has he admitted that he faked it in uh, yes, a clip later did. on, he right. admitted he faked some stuff. I don't remember exactly. A while what. ago. Yeah. But in this clip, in an interview with this Australian guy, he <laughs> he literally fakes it right in front of your eyes, and you can just see it. So he's being interviewed. Uh, you know, this. more to the plate in your story that, that you know, not all experiences have. So something just flies over his head all of a sudden and lo and behold, his thumb is captured of him. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know well, what the hell that was. And the door case closed on. Looks Stan. like a thumb. Oh, it is his thumb. He literally threw a pen over his back and gets, thought he could, you can see his whole body kind of move. Mm -hmm. What a liar. Yeah. Right in front of this guy yep, and pretends it's fraud. real. Pretends it's real. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then he has this like, and then I found this clip of him being in it. So he goes around, I think still and gets like talking parts at these conferences and like 
I love all this stuff, but part of me is like, I don't want to like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about some of these UFO conferences. Cause I just feel like you're giving a platform for fraudsters to like, yeah spread misinformation and, mm-hmm. and lie and like if you just let anyone if you just let it, anybody yeah. come and you know yeah. not properly vet out and i think but how there's do you, a yeah. but that's the thing is when you look at this community as a whole there no is a lot of completely prove that they're telling no, the truth but there is this like division within the Uf, ufo community and the ufology community of of there's there's a part of it where there's legitimate research happening being realistic logical common sense you know some of the ones that i like i i like Dr. Greer's work. I like Richard Dolan as well. He's he's great. He takes a very like logical approach to ufology and alien abductions and everything. And then there's like this whole other world of these people who have like the most profound paranormal crazy experiences with literally zero evidence. Yeah. And, and you're you just to have to take, take it, it at, at their word. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, in, in Stan's case, I feel like his case of all this happening would be stronger if he didn't present all of this video and photo evidence wouldn't yeah, you say I, so i agree yeah like you might believe him a little bit more yeah if you hadn't seen what you saw yeah i might if i you know especially because it's interesting that he's had so many like sightings on camera and stuff which obviously they could be fake or they could be other things but if it was just that i could could have believed him but i don't know it gets weird for me when it's like yeah i think the pictures really sunk his ship the video it's just like dude you are just faking stuff and I mean, you just all you have to do is, is listen to him talk and watch him. So I mean, I'll just play a little bit of this because he talks about how there's something else that like comes out of him, almost like he's either possessed or channeling. It's weird, but. Okay, so the last thing before we wrap this up, I just wanted to show the actual thing he's talking about coming out of him. So not only does he do this, he, he's had a lot of success, he says, with this Dr. Sprinkle. Um, <laughs> Dr. Sprinkle and him traveled to do this live for people. 
And so he goes to Mexico and does this live and it's on camera and it's him in, in a trance in a hypnotic trance channeling information from whatever this entity is. Mm. And it, to explain. you got to see it. Humans do not understand time. Mm, time is a fabric like a sheet. Um, you can be in a particular location on the sheet. Mm, once you learn how to lift off the sheet, you can move to a, another location on the sheet. Mm, mm, humans believe in humans <laughs> communicate linearly. Linearly, humans mm, believe in linear time travel. Linear star seeds words. Linear. Mm, it is not a straight line. It is touching together, touching together. I've literally together. heard so many it other people say raising this. raising off the, the sheet and mm, Profound moving stuff. to a different spot. As simple as that. Interesting story, there but I've heard it before. There is a electromagnetic component to mm, gravity. And once humans understand this, it will be easier for them to manipulate. There are already mm, government, government, not good, not good, <laughs> that have back engineered this technology and use it for their own gain. That's the best information that they're going to give you is not good, not good. Karmic cycle really? must stop for the human race to evolve naturally. Well, I could have done that. Yeah. Let's hook me up and yeah. let me have a past life regression. Anyone can sit there and like just bullshit about this. Like anyone could do this and yeah, nothing about yeah. him is believable to me. He seems like, what do you think like I that? said, he looks like a math teacher. He's just, I don't <laughs> do understand. You think he's why. even, I, I don't even think he's hypnotized there. No, I don't I think, think he's hypnotized. he's literally acting. He's literally laying he's like, there like, mm, mm, uh, mm. <laughs> like, what is that? Make Government, it more? bad. Mm. <laughs> yeah, bad, bad, bad. Like, that's the best you're going to get. He was like and trying to talk he like said, a, yeah. And I agree. Like, that's such an interesting concept. But I've heard yeah. philosophers talk about yeah. the fabric of time and yeah. say things like the sheet, the and, sheet and the li linear time travel and us thinking time is linear, but it's actually not. You can hop around. Yeah. Like, I've heard so many things like yeah, that before none of it's profound none no. of it's new none of it's fresh it's no. all regurgitated information he probably read prior to doing yeah this. give us like give us something that is groundbreaking yeah that changes everything like if the aliens are really talking to you they need to provide you with some better proof than bad bad government like that's yeah. just so dumb yeah i mean what do you make of this whole story and stand as a whole like if you had to encapsulate all of it i think he's a really creative dude who wished that this was all happening to him i yeah. think he has a huge ego yeah and i think he's got a creepy thing with kids that's yeah. my final thoughts on stan yeah. to be honest Damn. <laughs> all right so the final question is do you stand stan i don't stand stan <laughs> we don't stand i unstand stan man stan <laughs> seriously stan, stan the alien man <laughs> hey, that's a good song <laughs> No, I mean, uh, to just wrap this up and put my final thoughts on it, I think that this is an unfortunate scenario where people that see this documentary that happened upon it on YouTube, or maybe this is the first UFO thing they see, right. or they've ever... And they're just mind blown. No, but not not even though. Those people, I'm just like, I, I hope that, you know, maybe this, you, you know, you'll question your belief in Stan a little bit yeah. from this. Um, from our analysis of it a bit, because I, I mean, I honestly think that he wishes this was happening to him. Mm -hmm. I think, is it possible he saw a UFO or weird thing happen? Yeah. I mean, it's possible. Yeah, is I it, think he may have. Is too. it possible his house is haunted and there is some paranormal, paranormal things happening? Sure. It's possible. But I think he may have took something that happened once and then decided to blow it completely mm -hmm. out of proportion. But honestly, yeah. I think this whole thing from the very beginning was like a stage set up and too. hoaxed. And he too. is a complete, I mean, let's just say I haven't seen Stan Romanek on any sort of mm -mm. UFO conference speaking list in the past, like five years. I mean, ever since he got, you know, the, the yeah. charges on him and stuff, yeah. like I think people are, are like, all right, yeah. stay back, dude. Like you're a sex offender now. And yeah. like, you're just creepy. And, and, and that whole element too. I mean, he, that's, that's just, if, any of that is real and he you know was doing those things yeah that's just fucked and you know i don't mm -hmm. i don't care I have to no have this guy or, mm -hmm. i i don't think he does i mean he's already 
exploited this fame that he's gotten yes. from this documentary, which who the hell made this? Why did you make a documentary on this guy? Like, come on. There's so I many other things. he made things. it on himself. No. Who no. made it? There was a producer and somebody came to him and they oh linked up. God. And, yeah. They made it about him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Cause I mean, the, if you, so go watch, go watch it after this and that way you can see the whole thing and, and it'll just reinforce, I think, uh, you know, maybe our views on it a little bit more because you'll see the full thing and you'll see the experts that they brought into it to remember at the end, they like interviewed the experts and they're like, you know, this Uh is real. We believe in stuff. Some experts, but there's, yeah, there's just not enough evidence that is been looked at by anybody else that's credible or anybody that's stuff, not in the inner the stuff circle just looks so fake yeah, that's yeah. the end of the day the like especially the peeping tom alien thing that's yeah. just so stupid looking and i mean he literally admitted he faked stuff you just saw yeah. him fake stuff yeah with the pen. throwing the pen so he, he he's not d- a trustworthy yes. guy if if i think if someone has faked something before and shown your true colors you should believe them the first time yeah. so and it's a shame that it's a shame that the, this happens because it discredits the rest of the topic, yeah. the rest yes. of the community and the rest of the researchers and people actually working hard on this subject, because mm-hmm. I think there is so much realness to it. And there is a lot of extraordinary evidence out there that and suggests this is happening. Could exist. And, right. And again, that information is already out there. Like it's not like he invented the word star seed. Yeah. That's everything he talks about is something uh, someone else has said. Like yes. he has concocted a fantasy based on, different Completely. theories and whistleblowers and all Completely. this different stuff so. created a fake reality for himself i think in order to get famous and get i think he yeah. eats up the fame he eats up the attention he wants to be considered books. special the way that yeah. the, the thing was talking about him like stan is just such a great guy blah blah yeah, blah. yeah. and he did write that website I, I don't know for sure but it i'm pretty sure he ran it yeah how odd yeah because literally That's i had to run dude. spell check through that bitch a couple times because <laughs> Like just things. What? Like somebody dyslexic totally wrote it. So 100%. it's probably him. I bet it was. And it was taken down after he got arrested and stuff. They took uh, all the shit down. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll leave it at that. You guys let us know what you think about Stan and the Stan Romanek story. Do you think he's a fraud? Do you think he's a real experiencer contact D? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments or uh, tweet us at mile higher pod. Yes. Yeah, we're going to wrap up today's episode. Thanks again for listening to the mile higher podcast. It's been real. And don't forget to tune in next week where we have yeah. Sarah Turney joining us to talk about the case of Alyssa Turney. You're not going to want to miss that one. It's no, going to be super definitely interesting. Not. So yeah, make sure you like and subscribe, but we'll see you guys next week. Stay safe. And we will see you next time.